Let's talk about the Tesla RoboTaxi. This is the bombshell idea that Elon dropped on us in 2019 that envisioned future Tesla vehicles as autonomous robot taxi cabs that spend their days moving people from point A to point B for a spectacularly low cost. Basically an AI utopia in which Tesla becomes unimaginably valuable as a company. Elon Musk had originally told us that this revolution would arrive by the end of 2020. And clearly that didn't happen, which is fair. The year 2020 didn't exactly work out for anyone the way that they had planned. But that doesn't mean that the idea is dead. It's just going to come as a gradual change instead of flipping a switch. And there have been signals this whole time that this change is coming. Some of them obvious and some more subtle. So today we're tracking the progress of the Tesla Robo Taxi and charting the course for this network into the future. Let's get going. We'll start with the obvious. Tesla's full self-driving software has improved by orders of magnitude in just one year of limited beta testing. And now that limited test group is about to explode over the coming weeks. As of right now, at least, Elon's plan is to start rolling out the new version 10.2 of the FSD beta to the top percentile of safety scored drivers on Friday, October 8th. And he wants to do this rollout at the pace of about 1,000 new users per day. That means by the end of the week, we could have seven times more users than we have today. It's a very steep upward curve in the number of self-driving cars that will be on the city streets of America. When we first saw the beta version of Tesla's auto steer on city streets feature, it was really cool to watch a car steer itself around 90 degree right hand turns and make unprotected lefts through intersections. And on its own, the system looked like it worked great. But once other drivers came into the mix, everything kind of broke down and the Tesla got very hesitant and the human driver pretty much had to take over and maneuver through the more difficult situations. Not a bad start, but still a lot of responsibility on the person behind the wheel. Over the months since then, and with every update to the software, we've been able to watch these self-driving abilities grow into a system that can in many cases take a person from point A to point B with no need for human intervention. And the fact that Tesla is confident enough to roll this beta version out to thousands and thousands of new users in a very short period of time shows just how much confidence they have that those zero intervention trips will become the norm. I can't believe they would be rolling this out if they still believe that the driver would have to be intervening more often than not. Because although there have been no collisions involved with the FSD beta test, we've seen some pretty scary near misses take place. So now we get to imagine the very near future. If in just one year of testing with 1000 people, the software can go from kinda works but mostly fails to works amazing 90% of the time with just a few odd mistakes, then imagine how much faster we can go with orders of magnitude more testers on the road all across the United States, providing an infinitely wider range of data. That first year was basically confined to the San Francisco Bay Area. Now we're going to New York City. We're going to small towns in rural areas. Everything that America has to offer. So we have to imagine that the time it's going to take the engineers at Tesla to solve that final 10% of the self-driving puzzle is not going to be very long. Maybe a year at the most, maybe six months. Either way, the software problem is about to be solved and that means that we can move on to the robo taxi. From everything that we've seen with their vehicle design over the past couple of years, we know that Tesla is already building their cars with autonomy in mind. This is true of every Tesla vehicle, but we can see it particularly in the new Model S and Model X interior design. The Model S Plaid. It's a bizarre paradox of a car. 
the most exciting vehicle in the world to drive, but most people who try one find the driving experience to be kinda awkward thanks to the unusual steering control and total lack of levers and switches involved. The way Elon describes the functionality of the new cars is kind of like having an integrated robotic chauffeur. The car will just intuitively learn your habits over time and gradually reduce the amount of driver inputs down to zero. If you are the kind of person who drives to an office every day at the same time, then all you need to do is sit down and buckle your seatbelt and the car will autonomously bring you to work with not one single button press. If you're the kind of person who is constantly on the go, then your Tesla will sync with your digital calendar and will always know where you're going and when. So again, point A to point B without a single driver input. And at some point in the not so distant future, the legal obligation for the driver to actively watch the road and keep their hands on the wheel will just kind of disappear. I mean, why else did Tesla put an overpowered AMD Ryzen processor and RDNA 2 GPU into the infotainment system of the new Model S and Model X? We've got PS5 level gaming capability in cars with extremely long range that will probably do 95% of their charging overnight in the owner's driveway, and we know that the system does not need anywhere near that much power to play Cat Quest and Cuphead. So it's pretty obvious that Tesla has built this car today for a time when people will actually have the opportunity to kick back and play games in the front seat of their car while going about their daily activities at the same time. In my mind, that's RoboTaxi version 0.5 when your own personal car starts to function more like a cab that moves you from point A to point B rather than a tool for you to move yourself around in. The capability to have your personal vehicle go out into the world and function as an autonomous ride hailing service for other people comes next. The real version one of the robo taxi. This is the idea of the Tesla network, basically Uber, but with autonomous Teslas. The company would roll out the feature through the Tesla mobile app, and you could basically toggle the availability of your robo taxi on and off as you please. Would make for a pretty awesome side hustle. Easily enough to offset your monthly insurance payments, maybe even your entire monthly finance payment on the car. I don't wanna go back and reference the numbers on cost and profit that Elon gave us back in 2019 at Autonomy Day, because we know that whatever he was planning back then didn't really work out, and the world that we live in today is vastly different from the one that we left behind in 2019, but we can still expect that the operating cost of a robo-taxi will be very low. Electricity for charging and wear on the tires, and that's about it. The cost to the passenger will be similarly low, probably about one half to one quarter the cost of your average Uber ride. That should still even out to a fairly healthy profit margin for the robo-taxi operator. Some people are already eyeing the Tesla network as a business model. That seems to be the number one reason behind those folks who have like five or 10 Cybertrucks on pre-order at least. They don't wanna drive a different truck every day of the week just to flex on their neighbors. They want to start a fleet of robo-taxis with them. And given the extremely long range of the tri-motor Cybertruck and the amazing durability of the vehicle design, that makes a lot of sense to do. Honestly, the hardest part of this system is going to be working out the logistics of having unsupervised people in a car with no driver that they don't own. It's like the majority of humans are good, respectable individuals, but the minority are just a real bunch of assholes that exploit everything and leave a wake of destruction behind them. So I don't know what to do about that. I'm sure we'll find a middle ground, but there's always going to be a certain degree of liability involved in a privately owned robo taxi that will put off that average Tesla owner from doing it on a regular basis. Like, Operating costs would be low until someone smashes your center display screen. Then what happens? Who pays for it? It's hard to imagine Tesla reimbursing. Would you have to go to court to get the money out of the passenger? I'd personally have some reservations at the very least, but 
let us know if you'd be comfortable sending your own car out into the world to make a living. The biggest problem with step two, for now at least, is Tesla's production volume. Tesla can't build enough cars to satisfy the people who want to use them as a personal vehicle, let alone build enough cars to supply commercial fleets of robo-taxis. Even with the company reaching a production capacity in 2021 of probably 900,000 to 1 million cars, there is still way more demand than supply happening right now. So that's gotta change before we reach step three. The end game for this whole robo-taxi scheme is really going to come when we reach an inflection point where more people prefer cars as a service than cars as personal property. We've talked about this idea a few times in the past. If the robo-taxi is a success, then it is inevitable that we reach a point where the average person is going to lose interest in owning their own car. Sure, collecting cars can still be a thing if that's what you're into, but I think for the majority of people, it would be a massive relief to just do away with car ownership. No more monthly payments on a rapidly depreciating asset. With the exception of limited production exotics, cars are the worst investment. You spend a staggering amount of money on the thing over the course of five years or whatever and end up with something that is basically worthless. If you really want to drive a car, go to a closed track and pay a fee to rip around in a Tesla Roadster or whatever other kind of alien hypercar we have available at that point. There can still be a balance to be found. For this scenario to really take off, then we'll need Tesla to be producing a purpose-built robo-taxi vehicle. This might be that variation of the new Model 2 or Model Q or whatever you want to call that cheap Tesla that is coming in 2023, the one that Elon is saying might have no steering wheel or pedals. That might be an intermediate solution. I think that car will be available to commercial buyers with no controls or maybe just hidden controls, but the real robo-taxi vehicle is probably going to be something completely different some kind of vehicle design that was never intended to be driven by people, probably optimized to travel through tunnels and prioritizes fast, high volume production over aesthetics. Because for this to ever really work, then we need a spectacular amount of these things available, enough that it actually becomes more convenient to hail a ride than own a car. That's not going to be easy to pull off, but when you really think about it, it does seem like a real possibility. At this point, Tesla will probably stop selling cars altogether. That's what I'd do at least if it were my company. Why would I build a robo taxi and sell it to you and let you make a ton of money off of it when I can just keep the car for myself and run my own robo taxi network and keep making money from that car for a decade? The value of a car at that point is not the sum of its parts, it's the potential for earnings over a lifespan of probably 1 million miles. Even if you only make 30 cents per mile in profit, that's a $300,000 car. And if Tesla is building 20 million cars a year at that kind of value per car, then the total value of their annual production capacity comes out to some number that's so big it doesn't even fit on my calculator. In theory, all that we need to get this whole process started is the software and regulatory approval. But there is still going to be the battery problem that slows everything down. It's great that people are willing to buy 10 Cybertrucks, but it's looking very much like getting even one Cybertruck is going to be a challenge for at least a couple of years into the future. Tesla is getting close to solving the battery problem. They thought they could maybe be there by now with the 4680 cell production, but it's not really going according to the time frame that we were hoping for. Maybe LFP battery chemistry is the real answer to the problem. Maybe it's still the 4680 cell that is the key. Probably the sweet spot is some combination of both. But when do you think the Tesla Robo Taxi will start to take over personal transportation? I'm still thinking this is something that we really see take hold in the 2030s, but I know that there are some much more optimistic predictions out there, so drop your theories in the comment section below. 
For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.